TV. Now do you know what? Today I've got a very, very special celebrity sewing guest. It's Colleen G. Lee from the fashion, <laughs> from the fashion <laughs> sewing vlog. We are so lucky to have her here today. So if you haven't heard about the fashion sewing vlog TV, you need to have a look because even I am learning some techniques from there. So, Colleen, I just, just want to tell you a little bit of background. So, Colleen I have admired for many years and ripped off as well, but we'd never ever met before. And just through being on YouTube and admiring each other, we started sort of um, tweeting each other and then we Skyped each other. And do you know what? I've never met her before and she's going to stay the night in my house. Yeah. <laughs> Today with Colleen, she's going to demonstrate to us how to do something that I've always struggled with, but apparently it's really easy. So Colleen is going to show us how to do a bound buttonhole. And if you don't know what it is, look at this. So what is a bound buttonhole, Colleen? A bound buttonhole is when you're using fabrics in order to make the opening for the button to come through. So it looks a bit like a welt pocket, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, there it is, yeah. Okay. Yeah, the technique's quite similar. So what does it look like on the back? You'd be surprised. <gasps> that is so neat. Look it at almost that. Almost looks identical. So Colleen, can I have a look? Can yeah. we look inside? Absolutely. Because then we can really see what you've been doing then. And because it's got all this on the inside, that's another thing that frightens people off from doing this type of button. What you do, this is silk organza. And oh. that's offering stability to the area. Could it be another type of stabiliser? Yeah, yeah, it could yeah. be another type of stabiliser, that's fine. And I've, um, I've interfaced the front and also the back of the um, coat or jacket. And then you've got these, I'll describe them as lips at the moment, because they do look like lips. Yeah, they, they do. Look, yeah, sort of thing. I like so, it. Yeah. <laughs> and that is quite easy to do those lips, and I'll show is you it? how quickly. Yeah. So it's this part strips. that you're referring, because yeah. it's like a mouth. Yeah. Really. Okay, but I'm interested to see how you can get it so neat on both sides. That's the bit of magic that I want yeah. to learn. Right, I think I'm ready to have a go at that. Okay, you sure? <laughs> yeah, 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 I'm fine. <laughs> so let's see how she does it then. So what's the first thing we do, Colleen? Right, the very first thing we need to do is draw your grid for your buttonhole. So I've got a rectangle shape here. So you start with your rectangle shape first and then you find the middle of your buttonhole, which is this line here. And these ones, which is lighter, this is where we're going to cut into the um, buttonhole and fold those back. Okay, so she's drawn that shape, that, yeah. you called it a pillar box shape. Yeah. yeah. Um, onto the organza, but it can be any sort of stabiliser. Yeah. A stabiliser is something that you sew with fabric to keep it sort of stable. Um, so then what do you do after that? So this is step one. I've okay. drawn my shape out. And the next thing that confuses people quite often and the best way I get people to remember is you put your stabiliser on the right side of your fabric and then you post your stabiliser to the wrong side. Uh, Tree, do you have any pins? What? Pins? You uh, are joking, aren't yeah. you? <laughs> There you go, look, can I just show? Look, look how dusty those Yay! pins are. <laughs> so when, when you're doing your bound buttons, and, and because it's all about accuracy, that more often than not you're going to need pins, or you can baste it all the way around. And I must admit, I haven't done one for ages and ages, and when Tree told me that um, if I wanted to do a technique, could I do a bound button on them? I'm like... Oh gosh, when's the last time I made one? <laughs> Let's see if I can Sorry. remember. But no, fine, I love the challenge. So yeah, I'll put one more. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start in the middle. That's going to be the best place to start because you don't want to be starting at the corners because that would be the weakest point for when you're starting to secure your stitching. So once you get to this point here, the corners, a good tip here is to get your needle down. Yes, and I'll advise you to do this is because you want it to be exactly the same on that side count how many stitches is from that point to there and then when you get to this point count how many stitches it is to there so hopefully you're going to have that symmetry and that's what you're looking for that's in a good tip. so 
desk. Oh, another thing, make sure that you do use the smallest stitch, roughly about two, I'd say. Oh this dear. Isn't, but it's all right because I want you to see this with this sample. Okay. So I'm using big stitching, but keep your stitching small. And because I've been talking, I don't I know, know how many. Didn't count. I didn't count. <laughs> didn't count. So keep your stitches small, keep going, keep going. And when you get to the point of the corner, lift and pivot down and you'll be counting at this stage just so that you get that perfect hand button needle down that point and then lift pivot down and you can count yourself and now right so you finish stitching around the edge yeah so what's the next thing that you do? The next thing is a frightening part where you're going to be cutting into your fabric and there's no turning back. Well, the thing is, unfortunately, this sort of thing happens when you've nearly finished making it. Is that right? Yeah. Oh, how scary. Okay, so Colleen's going to show us now about cutting out our bound buttonhole. Go on then, show us how to do the scary okay. cutting. <laughs> Sorry, but it is scary. Okay, so the on. trick is I've got this line here. Yeah. So I fold it in half that way, and I'm going to use the middle of my scissors. I'm going to open it that wide, <gasps> and then make a little nip. This is what I do. And then I'm going to insert my scissors. Should be snips, and I'm going to snip to there. And the triangle shapes here. I'm going to cut into the corners, right into corners. Do not cut into the stitching. Otherwise, you're going to mess up your band buttons and then cut into the other end. Then cut into stitching and then you do the opposite side. So now you're going to turn it. So you, you did it on the right side, didn't yeah. you? That's the right yeah. side. So now this is where you say you yeah. turn it into the wrong. And Would you say post the letter yeah. through the letterbox? <laughs> I'm going to okay. post <laughs> so my organs Posting the letter through the letterbox. Through box. the letterbox. There you go, big gaping hole. Okay, so that's almost Scary. like a lining, isn't it? Yeah. Ah, I see why you've used a kind of organza. Right, okay. Yeah, you, yeah, you probably could get away with using um, lining. Sometimes yeah. sewing is all about experimenting. And I've got to a stage now oh, where I need to press. Line. Say that again, because I like that. <laughs> Sometimes sewing is all about experimenting. Yeah. Did you hear that? I'm not going to stick my face there because <laughs> it would look really awful. But... Um, Sometimes sewing is about experimenting, yeah. okay? Don't take it too seriously. Yeah. So you're going to press that back now, aren't yeah. you? Yeah, yeah. All right then. Off so the next stage is going to be getting your iron and then gently pressing. Remember, it's up and down. So I'm not happy with that. And then I'm going to turn it to the right side to make Ooh, sure I'm quite happy. So you should be see now, we now have the pillar box. No, seriously, this is really important. So, so tell us about this. Okay, so remember this is the right side of your garment and this will be the front of your garment. Yeah. And we've cut into it. We've got over that fear factor now and it's yeah. looking good. The next fear one is going to be the facing. Because they so, have to line up. Yeah, they have it's to line up. It's critical that they line up. Exactly. So you'd have that box. But remember, you'd be following your pattern markings right. anyway, won't you? So you, if you had about four, then you'd have yeah, four of these boxes sure. on each side, the yeah. front of your garment and also on your facing. Okay. And then it's the same method again, where you're going to have that line to follow and then you're going to have the triangles. So I'm going to do exactly the same thing that I've done there to here. But how did you get that again? Show us again how you got it. How did you align it? By so do your um, front of your garment just... Put it over to your basin and draw around the box and that way you know you get more or less guaranteed to have that um accurate uh, sewing to the back of your button right that's really really important yeah. okay brilliant so and then we're gonna cut this the same way it's no different oh, already now yeah oh. and cut the same way and you cut into your fabric again no turning back <laughs> <laughs> and then you can just press those into position Oh, so you don't have to put any... No, no, oh, you, you won't need that. Okay. You, you see why, you'll see why you won't need the um, organs or anything like that later on. Right, so you're going to press those open like you have there, but yeah. you haven't got any organs yeah. on them. Yeah. Okay. 
Right, so the next stage is going to be the lips. So here's a quick tip. I was actually taught where I have to take them individually like this and place them like this and then get the other one and place it this side and then kind of whip stitch it to keep it in place so you keep the shape. Right. Here's a quicker method. Put those together and then what I'm going to do is going to sew down the centre of here on the sewing machine and then press and then be ready to insert into the pillar box position. So the next thing we need to do is sew along here. With a normal get, stitch? Yeah, just a normal regular stitch. So if you get your sewing machine... Then yeah, I'll get the sewing machine. machine. So that I'm confused. Tree's confused. <laughs> Right, I'm ready to sew the lips for the round buttonhole. I'm just finding the centre of the rectangular shape. I'm just going to sew a straight line from that one end to the other. Reverse. So we now created the pillar box, yeah? We're now ready to apply the lips. And we put, remember you've been lining up all your notches and then the tip here is that where you've stitched, you line up with the point of the triangles of the pocket so you know it's going to be in the right place. And you place a pin. And then you do the same on the opposite side. I have a question. And the question is, when you sew, do you have to make sure that that organza doesn't show? Yes, you do. And are you sewing on top now, or are you folding that back and sewing in there, or...? Yeah. Oh, yes. so we'll show you that close up. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So where we actually sew, it's not going to be on the top, no. like going on the top. We're, We're doing this clever magic stuff. Yeah. Oh, that's so good. So where do you sew? You sew along that same stitch line. Great, yeah. and then and then yeah, okay. Yeah, you're gonna follow that all the way around, all the way around. Yeah, and then you're gonna come to tr little triangle parts, and then you're gonna go all the way around. <gasps> Isn't that tricky? It, yeah, it is. It's a bit. It's fiddly. Yeah, it's quite fiddly. Down. Hang on. What did you say? You're starting halfway. Yeah. Ah, Rather than okay. just because because uh, it's weak on the corners. No, I don't want to build up the thread in those areas. Right. Otherwise, it can get too bulky. Okay, so, so start. starting in the middle of that horizontal line. Yeah. And then following the original stitch line, follow the original... That pink yeah. line yeah. that we followed, did, yeah. yeah. Just reverse. Now this is where it becomes really tricky. You just go slowly. Remember you're using the smallest stitch. Use your hand wheel when you get to the corners. Right, lift your foot. Pivot, take that pin out because I want to be in control. When you turn around, can we have a little look? Yep. So I'm going to just move this so I can see. So getting right in the corners there and then just go slowly. At this stage, you wouldn't need to cut because you're just following the original stitch line. So I'm going to start sewing again. Following the original stitch line. So go down again. I must come into the end now. So that's where you stitched it all the way around. Yeah. Okay, and then? And then the button is more or less complete. Okay, before I actually open the lips and make it into a functional buttonhole, what you need to do is hide all this. So remember what I did earlier, is that we did exactly the same thing that we've done to this, but with this now is going to cover your button hole, your bound button hole, like that. And the next thing you need to do is hand sew that into place so it'll look like this. So I just want to ask you something. So what is the best sort of stitch? Two questions actually. What's the best sort of stitch to blindly stitch this together? Also, would you trim back any of this excess? Yes, you would. 
question that you, you're asking that once you've actually covered all of that and you've moved all the bulk the next stitch ham stitch you need to do ham stitching it's going to be the slip stitch because you can hide the slip stitch within the actual right. stitching right so once you've slaved over doing the back and making it all neat yeah what about this it doesn't open the trick is using your stitch on pick your on picker and then you're gonna get yourself into the opening and only cut the stitches so you should hear a pop and then gently just start to open it up and then start cutting your threads. Now I think that that is so amazing. Look how neat. Look how neat it is. <laughs> so Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Isn't she wonderful? Coming all the way from up north to Stitchless TV and showing us this wonderful bound buttonhole. You're going to see them all over my projects now. Now, I really recommend that you go and look at Fashion Sewing Blog TV because really your tutorials are so simple to understand and, and we love that at Stitchless TV. <laughs> But she cuts to the chase with her tutorials. So if you want to know buttonholes, just look but buttonholes in fashion sewing blog. Right. So how many videos? How many videos? I've got loads of I think it's I think I'm almost near 250 now. Yeah. 250 <laughs> videos. God, I've only got 100. 250 videos. So make sure you take a look. So say goodbye to Colleen. Bye. And you never know, she might come back again. We might do more collaboration. Thank you so much for watching Stitchless TV. See you again very soon. Bye. Bye.